My name is Sane Simon and I welcome you back to the series where we analyze introverted leadership on the example of Thomas Shelby. Introverted leadership is all about tactics, politics, power, reading people, observing your surroundings and thinking multiple steps ahead. It's a mix of chess and poker. In the previous episodes, we analyzed themes like the art of drama, the art of leverage, the art of power, the art of framing, the art of seduction and the art of the deal. We will see all of them again in this episode, but before we dive in, let's recap what happened. Thomas Shelby is a kind character with a good heart who plays the Shelby persona to survive and strive in a dark world. Now that Thomas came back from war, he changed. He learned about power and strategic thinking. In war, he faced death and is now fearless, not afraid to take on bigger, more powerful enemies. He is not afraid of more powerful enemies because he can see their weaknesses. Thomas is an introvert, which means that he thinks multiple steps ahead. He notices things that others miss. He observes his surroundings and sees chances others don't. Thomas is ambitious. He strives to leverage his family business from the hood to the circles of high society by using the circumstances he's presented with. This is the current chessboard. Thomas has weapons as leverage, but the agent against him. Thomas has interest of Billy Kimba, but the Lee family against him. With this said, let's tune into the third episode of the first season of the Peaky Blinders series. Opening shot, the world of Thomas Shelby. Here we see Thomas' motivation, his why. This is the life Thomas tries to escape. The art of seduction, Thomas and flirting with women. Grace again teasing him, making jokes around him, showing him that she's unafraid of him. Thomas enjoys it because he likes her. But his intentions to take her with him to the races is not because he likes her. Thomas has a plan. The art of the deal. Thomas in business meeting. Members of the IRA want something. The Irish member want the guns that Thomas possess. While they try to negotiate a deal, Thomas observes and remains non-reactive. Rumors that there was a robbery. Robbery of what? The Irish suspect that Thomas has the guns, but Thomas plays the unknowing. It's a similar strategy like the agent tried in the second episode, but here it's an actual strategy. Similar to poker, Thomas has an ace and the Irish suspect him to have the ace, but they can't tell for sure. He plays here the unknowing to keep them in the dark. Your night shift must be dreaming. Maybe they are. Or maybe they're not. Thomas bluffing, observing what the others know, collecting so information. But who do you speak? The people of Ireland. The Irish Republican Army. For a fact. For a fucking fact. Thomas observes his opponents. He can see that the Irish rebels are idealists and Thomas don't support idealists because they are no good for business. Thomas sees here that the Irish are not good business partners to make business with because they are emotionally driven, irrational and unpredictable. The art of power. The Irish member starts singing and comes closer to show power, but Thomas remains calm under pressure. Thomas is still non-reactive, observing and confirming his evaluation. They are emotional driven, irrational and unpredictable. Whiskey is good proofing water. Thomas gave his guest alcohol before the meeting started. On the one side to build trust, giving rapport, what rapport is we will see later in this episode, but on the other more interesting side, he is using alcohol to open them so it's easier to read them. They defied your orders. They haven't left the city. Thomas' sister Ada married Freddy Fawn against Thomas' will. He ordered Freddy to leave the city, but they both refused and instead made the opposite. Thomas is confronted with a situation where he has no control of. Thomas wants always to be in control. I told the coppers Freddy wouldn't come back. It was part of the deal. What bloody deal? What happened to family votes? What happened to meetings? Thomas wants to be in control and lead family business by himself. He's overgoing family votes, making all the decisions by himself. Here we see again a weakness in introverted leadership. Introverted leadership can quickly result in arrogance and controlling behavior. The art of power. You think I can't handle Tommy Shelby? You can't. I'm having trouble these days and I'm twice the man you are. Polly's an example for a strong female leader. She is not defined by her gender, but by her virtues, such as confidence and intelligence. We saw that in the second episode and we see it here again. This is Polly Shelby persona that she plays in public. The art of seduction.
The agent is rejected by woman. He is not attractive. This shows that looks aren't about physical appearance, but about the power that you radiate. The agent is weak and insecure within, and that makes him unattractive. Again, similar to Gladiator with Commodus and Maximus. It's not their looks, but what they radiate that makes them attractive. Your virtues are more important than your physical appearance. The art of leverage. It's being collected this morning. I know. The power of introverted leadership comes mostly through intelligence and information. Gaining information about others and the situation and then using this information to think multiple steps ahead. Thomas observes more than he talks. He has eyes and ears everywhere in the city. When something happens, Thomas knows about it, which gives him a lot of power and leverage to create opportunities. Here, he is using his intel to create an opportunity to meet Billy Kimba. The art of the deal. Thomas again in business meeting, but this time Thomas wants something. How the bloody hell do you know? I know a lot of things, Mr. Kimba. Thomas shows his power to Billy Kimba, showing him that he has eyes and ears everywhere and that he is a beneficial business partner because of the intel he can provide. The planning and showing up in numbers and robbing your bookies, running chalk and rafflers. <laughs> you think I can't handle the lease? Just a word of warning from a friend, that's all. Here we see Thomas using rapport, a strategy to make a deal with Billy. Rapport is a psychological term. It's from various studies and is mostly used in sales and the art of the deal. It's really simple. First, you give someone something to gain favor and lower their guard. Then, when the person is open and trusts you, you make your sales pitch. Thomas is here providing Billy with intel about the Lee family. He first gives him something for free to lower his guard and gain his favor. This way, Billy is more receptive when Thomas brings his deal offer later on. Tommy, you best have a word with Arthur as well. What's wrong with bloody Arthur? He's got the Flanders Blues again. Shelby family has a crisis. People keep asking me questions that I don't know the answer to. Arthur is realizing that he is not in control of situation. Arthur feels powerless. He feels like an outsider in his own family, not knowing what is going on around him. What guns, Tommy? I thought after your meeting, I thought you needed a break. <laughs> what bloody guns, Tommy? Arthur was with Thomas at war in France and is mentally not capable of leading anymore. Arthur's PTSD is even worse. If at hard time these past few years, God knows you have. You deserve some rest. And all you need to know is, it's us that has the machine guns now. And it's them that's in the mud. Thomas calms Arthur down by including him in his plans. I have a surprise for you. Thomas gifts Arthur the garrison bar, making him the head of the pub. When we were in France, he used to say, when I go back to England, I want to own my own pub. This way Arthur feels important and empowered again. He is now responsible for the garrison pub, which makes him proud and gives him a sense of importance. This principle is from Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. The thing that most people crave for is the feeling of being important. Most people search for money, power and status to feel important. You win friends and heavily influence people by giving others the feeling of importance. Thomas here gives Arthur the feeling of importance and that way winning Arthur as a loyal member in his team. Thomas is again in a heated position. Freddy is back in town, but this is a problem because Freddy is part of the deal with the agent. To continue his dealings with Billy Kimba, Thomas first needs to get Freddy out of town. The art of power. Thomas and Freddy meet each other. Even when confronted with a gun, symbol for death, Thomas remains calm and non-reactive. Talk to me about the guns. You remember we used to jump in here and see a good swim across the I'm here to talk business, Tommy. Do you reckon we can still do it? Thomas not answering questions. Instead, he responds with another questions, leading so the conversation in another direction, confusing his enemy, to use the moment to take over the control. I love her, Tommy. She loves me the same. Thomas realizing that Freddy and Ada are truly in love, but still this interferes with his plans. This marriage will not stand. Thomas demonstrates power with strong eye contact. 
he doesn't support Freddy because he's an idealist and Thomas don't like idealists for reasons we saw already in that episode. They are emotionally driven and unpredictable. This is Thomas' way of showing that he cares about his sister and he doesn't see Freddy as good husband for her. Thomas is again hunted by his PTSD, reliving the traumas of war. He is still under pressure and can't escape the memories. Thomas hides his morphine, symbol for his weakness. He tries to not show his weakness to others. But others who have also been at war understand Tommy because they feel the same way. You've got enough trouble, right Tommy? The whiskey and the smoke. They go through the same things as he does, they all try to suppress these feelings of PTSD and they also don't know how to deal with it. This is again leadership. Thomas tries to be a good leader, not to show weakness to his soldiers, but here we see that Thomas is also able to open himself and that's why he's such a good leader. He shares the pain with his men, similar to Maximus who shares the pain with his fellow soldiers. Did you buy a dress? Yes, bought a dress. How does it look? Grace and Thomas have a date. We see in the montage how both prepare for their date. The feminine and the masculine. Here we see that Grace is a mirror of Thomas. You could even say that they are twin flames, soulmates. They were in love at first sight. They are both different signs of a coin. Thomas poor from the hood and Grace rich from high society. But both mirrors of each other, not defined by the outer world they came from. Both can open up and be themselves around the other. Thomas lets his guard down when she is around and Grace lets her guard down when he is around. Thomas is using Grace as a bait for Billy Kimba and Grace is using Thomas to gain intel about the guns. Both use the other for a purpose, but also both like each other. True love. We meet the Peaky Blinder army, led by Arthur and John. Thomas is the representative leader who is the strategist and Arthur and John are the executives. While Arthur and John prepare for battle, Thomas and Grace enter the racetrack. Thomas is giving her a feeling of being important because she is with him. They can get into places where normal people can't get in. It's a similar scene like in the Then He Kissed Me scene from the movie Goodfellas. We are introduced to the races. This is the high society. Here are the people with power and influence. In the beginning of this episode, we saw the world that Thomas comes from and the life he tries to escape. Now we see the world that Thomas desires. You dance. If I'm asked properly. Thomas using Grace to bait Billy Kimba and get his intention. That's also why Thomas wanted her to dress in red. While Thomas is on the upper floor dancing, making strategic moves, Arthur leads the Peaky Boys on the battlefield. Here we see the brutality of the Peaky Blinder army. Arthur showing his power through violence and drama. This is also the art of drama. By order of the Peaky Blinders. The art of the deal. Now we see the second part of the business deal. The deal started in the suit shop and now here it continues. Your money, Mr. Kimber, rescued from the Lay Brothers and returned to you with a request for a fair hearing. Tommy throws collected cash on the table, so much that it even falls on the ground. This is again Dale Carnegie how to win friends and influence people. This principle is called show rather than tell. He shows overwhelmingly his point before explaining it, to make it even more powerful. He again uses the principle of rapport, giving first results, solving a problem of Billy Kimber and then making his offer. Your own protection is failing, Mr. Kimber. I want to suggest that from now on, you contract out your racetrack security to the Peaky Blinders. In return, you give us 5% of the take and 3% Legal batting pitches at every race meeting north of the River Severn. What do you say, Mr. Kimber? Now Thomas makes his final deal offer. Precise, clear and profitable where both parties profit, while maintaining strong eye contact, showing confidence, confidence in the service he is able to provide. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the art of the deal. That's how you make money. You solve other people's problems. Thomas studied Billy Kimba and found a weakness in his enterprise. He found a problem from which he can profit and then he solved his problem and showed the results with drama, showing his power and his market value, showing Billy that he is a good business partner who is reliable, powerful and practical. The art of framing. Thomas establishes himself. He sets the frame as 
I am someone who you want business with. Even though Thomas is the one who wants business with Billy Kimba, he frames it as you want business with me. For exaggeration, he goes even so far to frame it as you need me. Billy makes one condition. He wants two hours privately with Grace and Thomas agrees as part of the deal. The art of seduction. Thomas around other women. He is again non-reactive. While Billy's wife is talking to him, complaining about Billy, Thomas is not giving her attention. He don't play the game. He is not giving her attention, but still listens because Thomas is an empath. He plays the cold Shelby persona, but inside Thomas is an empath who can relate to others. A very pretty hat. He gives a compliment, symbol for treatment on eye level, showing her respect, make her feel important. Again, Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Here we see that Thomas only plays the Shelby persona, but that he is a kind character underneath. That's why the wife of Billy Kimball likes Thomas and dislikes Billy. That's also why Grace likes Thomas and dislikes Billy. Similar to the agent, this shows again that attractiveness is not about looks, but what you radiate. The agent and Billy are both immoral men with no character, no respect and no real power. They radiate weakness. But people like Thomas and Polly have real power through their virtues. Billy has no control. That's why he's forcing control. He's forcing power due to a lack of power. We saw something similar in the second episode with the agent. But Thomas interferes and saves her because he's a kind character and knows that it's wrong and that he has to do something. In the heat of the moment, he follows his heart. In the heat of the moment, we see Thomas' true character. Both sitting in the car. She's angry with him, but he remains calm and smiles because he knows that he did the right thing. But then you change your mind. Why did you change your mind, Thomas? We know why he changed his mind, because we know who Thomas really is underneath the Shelby persona. But he remains non-reactive, not showing her that he likes her. End. Damn, each episode we learn so many things. It's incredible how much you can find in these episodes. We learned in this episode a lot about the art of power, the art of seduction, but mostly we saw a perfect example of the art of the deal. He found a problem in Billy's enterprise and provided solution to profit from it. We learned in this episode also about attractiveness, that attractiveness is less about looks, but more about power and confidence. That's it for this episode. I love you all for subscribing. The support in the comments is incredible. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Saint Simon and I'm excited to see you in the next episode.